Okay, boys and girls, I have so many blades on this little table that I can't even show them all in one picture. But today we are talking about Alaskan rated blades. Blades that I think do a good job at representing what Alaska is all about. Now, essentially how I made this or how I had this idea for Alaskan rated blades was blades that are strong, that are overbuilt, that could be rugged, and reliable and so that is essentially how these blades ended up on this list and today I want to talk about just a few blades that I think hit this mark pretty well and some of the most rugged blades that I have now admittedly there are a lot of knives on this list and if the knife that you like didn't end up on that list it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad knife just that I don't think it's the most rugged in its class so just for example this uh, good old Falk Even F1 is probably the strongest convex ground blade that I have in the collection there are others I just think it's the strongest and as far as it goes we're going to start off with two runner-ups that essentially were the inspiration behind this video. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so the first ones we're going to talk about are actually the two Adamasi, Adamases, whatever you want to call them, these guys right here. Now, these two, like I said, are runners-up because as people have explained, these guys do not do the greatest when it comes to batoning and just for a full disclosure i did actually baton these guys before this video just to see how strong they were i got both of them to fail and i will say that I, they are certainly not the weakest blades if you do some light batoning and some work with them they are not going to just instantly fail or fall apart and obviously they are still in working order they're not breaking you know they're not falling apart um, but they did slip out of their axis. They did slip out of their axis locks, both of them, multiple times, just for repeatability's sake. So it was not necessarily super hard, but it wasn't super easy to get either of them to fail, though the mini definitely was easier to fail than the full-sized axis, uh, full-sized Adamus. So for that reason, while I do like them, and while I do think that uh, visually they are a really good representation of overbuilt kind of thick knives, they don't meet quite the requirements. So to be fair, both of these guys are disqualified from being actually on the list, but they are runners up because they did help inspire this list. And honestly, they are actually not really that weak. They're still pretty, pretty good, pretty tanky blades, but not strong enough to meet the list so those two are going off to the gulag if you will so let's talk about the rest of the blades that really did actually meet the requirements so many of these blades are probably going to be quite familiar to you many of them also very heavily used on the channel and let's jump into it so first with the smallest on the list is going to be the falkneven f1 now the f1 is a pretty fantastic blade and a pretty kind of smaller blade but very capable it is certainly within my kind of range of bushcrafting blades and uh, about the same size as the bushcrafter but it is a pretty strong pretty reliable blade that was you know obviously designed in Scandinavia so it is kind of uh, similar to Alaska and overall the performance on this guy is pretty awesome it is maybe not the best of the best but it's certainly not far from it it has laminated VG10 steel and uh, this kind of thermo run handle uh, over molded on a full tank blade so it's strong it's comfortable in many different conditions and weather uh, conditions and uh, overall yeah it's a great blade so once again though it is uh, probably a little bit weaker due to the fact that it is a convex grind and the tip is unsupported but overall I think it is a pretty strong convex grind for what it is and it has a pretty thick pretty meaty stock of steel on it especially for its size Okay, so let's jump into a blade off to the side. The good old fashioned Bark River Knives Bushcrafter has to be on this list because I use the heck out of this blade and the one that I had before it. And they are ultimately some of the best bushcrafting knives that I've ever used and carried for general purpose use. So you can see this one gets quite a bit of love, but that CPM 3V blade 
is holding on very nicely. It is a fantastic blade, very comfortable to use, and once again, very robust as far as uh, field use goes. I have never had any issues with it. Moving on over to the other side, before we forget about it, is the SRKC. And in this one, we'll actually talk about a little bit more when we talk about the SRK, but the SRKC is really just the baby brother to the full-sized SRK. So the next one is going to be the Garberg, Mora Garberg. And this one is actually, it takes a lot of inspiration from our other knife that we talked about previously, the Falkneven F1. As you can see, it's uh, pretty similar in overall kind of design philosophy, but this is, like I said, the Garberg. It is made to Mora standards with a Scandinavian grind. This is, of course, the stainless steel version, but I've had this knife for years, used the heck out of this one as well, and uh, it's thick, it's heavy, and it's a pretty robust, overbuilt blade that is also very reliable. Okay. So obviously, in many lists regarding knives that are used outside, the Cold Steel SRK comes into the comes into the chat. Now, the SRK has a great track record. It's made in many different steels, and it is overall a very hard to beat blade. And even though it is not full tang like the rest of the others, except the baby brother to this one. This blade is still very strong, it's very tough, and I have tried to break this knife on many different occasions, and uh, it keeps on trucking along. Not to mention, also has a pretty sharp spine for striking a ferro rod, which I guess really all of these do, but uh, it is a fantastic blade, really, honestly, for hard use outside, and I cannot recommend it enough if you're looking for something that is very affordable. It is probably the cheapest knife on this whole list by a pretty much a considerable margin, unless you talk about the Artac, which we'll get to in a little bit, sneak peek. Um, but it's pretty much the cheapest by a margin. So anyways, that is the SRK and the SRKC. Basically, very, safe, very similar blades, uh, just a little bit smaller for the C. Okay, now moving over to the SE6. Now the SE6, I could also put the SE3 in here because I've used the SE3 a lot more than the SE6, but basically either or, uh, they are very tough knives. They are very well built, very comfortable to hold. And uh, the SE6 and the whole SE family of blades have an excellent, superb track record uh, from military and survivalists and search and rescue professionals. All the same, a lot of them swear by SE blades. And in fact, SE is uh, the company themselves is really ran by a bunch of people that do search and rescue and teach search and rescue classes. So if you get an SC blade, you know that you're getting something that is built up, built from the ground up to be an outdoor survival knife. So it's very hard to beat an SC, especially for the price, even though they're definitely not the cheapest knives. Uh, you know, for around $150 to $120, you're getting a blade that is purpose built for wilderness survival. About the only thing that can beat it is really the blade that is up next. And the blade that is up next is the CRK Pacific. Now, once again, very similar to the SC, uh, this blade really does everything outdoors that I want and need it to do. And I think the only thing that really makes this better than the SC is it just really has better components, better materials, and better ergonomics. Of course, this is a much more expensive blade than the SC. It is also slightly bigger, but it has a full tang, full piece of CPM S35VN, and uh, that's going to hold an edge for a very long time and be reasonably corrosion resistant. Obviously, S35VN is not the most corrosion resistant, but it is pretty darn corrosion resistant, and uh, it also has a textured micarta handle that is very comfy to hold for indefinite periods of time. So this blade, I really don't have enough good things to say about it. Uh, I could really spend an hour here telling you everything I like and everything I've done with it, but needless to say, it is definitely an Alaskan approved survival blade and it has been through the ringer like many of these knives and it keeps on keeping on. Okay, 
Now let's jump into the final two. So the final two, or the first of the final two, is one I can barely fit on this screen as a whole, and that is the Ontario Knives Artac 2. And this guy right here is, like I said, it's a big boy, and it is really an ultimate kind of survival knife. If you need something that's big and just kind of brutish, the Artac 2 really fits that role. It may not be perfect for every situation, but especially down in coastal Alaska where you're dealing with things like Devil's Club and things that you don't want getting close to you, this is a pretty good knife for chopping and cutting through underbrush or undergrowth uh, to help make paths, blaze trails, or even just clear a spot so that you can build a shelter or set up a tent. The Artac 2 is pretty darn good for that. And being made out of 5160 spring steel, this thing can take an absolute beating. And trust me, I have not been kind on the Artac 2 whatsoever. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna make a little bit of room for the next blade here. Last, but certainly not least, is the 3DK MAK. Now, the 3DK MAK is currently attached to my Desert Eagle sheath, and I just like showing off this setup because I think it's pretty cool and uh, I really enjoy using this setup. So, it is attached to the Desert Eagle uh, holster, uh, so it is kind of a conglomerate setup. But let's actually talk about the smaller blade that is attached to it. It's kind of funny, it's on this huge setup, but it is actually a reasonably pretty small knife in and of itself. Okay, so this is the 3DK MAK, and there's nothing too special or too fancy aside from that fun setup, but this is just a really high quality, really a really multi-purpose wilderness blade that will handle just about any type of situation. Once again, similar to the BRK Bushcrafter, I've put this thing through the ringer and it is a really great knife for outdoors. Is it the biggest blade on the list? No, definitely not, especially in comparison to the SC6 uh, or even the CRK Pacific, but it is a really great pretty stout blade that is reliable and once again it meets a lot of the kind of definitions for being an Alaskan rated blade. It's reliable, it's overbuilt, it's robust and it's going to be able to perform out in the wilderness whether you need to build a shelter or you need to skin an animal or you need to just whittle on a stick. Uh, this blade will do it all just like the rest of these guys. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you enjoyed what inspired this video. Uh, as always, guys, God bless and I'm out.